Hello everyone, welcome to Langage Studios. My name is Sahil Vusle. So today we will try to understand the concept of recursion. We will see how the recursion actually works, and uh, we will we will see what are the various ways of implementing recursion. So one is the functional recursion, another is the parameterized recursion, and we will take an example of a factorial, and we will trace it out, and we will see how we can uh, rep represent that uh, recursion flow uh, with the help of stack and with the help of tree. At the end, we will also solve a lead code question called power of two using recursion. So let's get started. So in recursion, we have a function called uh, f of n. So in, it can be any function, of course, like and then uh, that function calls itself again and again. So this is this is a concept of recursion. So when one function calls itself again and again, so that forms a recursion. So how basically it will be uh, executed is that so let's say we have a main function, okay, and the main function will be calling this f n, okay. So this will call our function f of n. So in memory, so we have a stack memory. So the trace of this function will be as follows. So first we will be having a main function. Because main 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 is the execution start of the execution. Okay, so this function will call this f of n. Okay, so f of n will be called, and then it will go inside this function. So it will try executing all the code that is uh, there in the f of n, and then it will it will find this uh, this line of code. Okay, and uh, this is the basically nothing but a function called to the same function. So this will also called f of n. Okay, like this. So again, f of n will be called. Similarly, this function again will call this function. Okay. So this uh, this function will keep on calling the same function again and again. Okay. And uh, so this is stack. Uh, so this is what happens in memory. Okay. Now there are few things which you have to care about when you actually solve a recursion function. Okay. So the first thing is that uh, we have to identify the base case, okay. And the second thing is that uh, we should identify the recursive case. So recursive case. And the third thing is, whatever whatever you do in base case or in recursive case, it's always that you return, always return something, okay. This is the third thing which we do. Okay, so what is basically a base case? Okay, so now as you can see, like uh, we have this function and this function keeps on calling the same function. Okay, now this is a problem because as you can see, there are lots of uh, function calls, and these records are being stored in this stack. Okay, now the problem is we have limited amount of memory. Now we can't actually keep on calling the same function again and again infinitely. So we have to stop at some point. Okay, now that is determined by this uh, base case. So base case tells us that when to stop calling the function again. Okay, so for example, let's say we are passing some number. Okay, so let's say this is the uh, variable that we are passing into this uh, function. Okay, and say if uh, number is equal to equal to zero, then will return. Okay, so let me write it again. So if the number, let's say the input number is zero, then we'll uh, return zero. Something like that. It can be anything. Something like that. Otherwise, if this is not the case, then we will keep on calling the function. Okay. So let's say we are calling uh, f of n again. Uh, let's say let's say the initial number was uh, 3 okay now assume that we want to pass 2 to this 3 minus 1 2 2 will be passed then 1 will be passed then 0 will be passed okay and at the end so this is our recursive case okay this is our recursive case uh, this is our uh, base case our base case and the third thing is that you should always return okay in this case we, we are returning 0 it can be anything any value it doesn't matter and here also we have to return this result then the function execution will be stopped otherwise it will of course like uh, if if there is there is no code below below this uh, function call 
then it will stop executing otherwise whatever function uh, whatever lines of codes we have after this function uh, it will be it will be executed and then this will be uh, this function will be popped off okay so let me let me show you what do i mean by this so this this base base condition is nothing but we have to stop somewhere if we are not stopping then what we are doing is identified by the recursive case okay and either either we are dealing with the base case or the recursive case we are always returning the result okay whatever we are doing it we are returning it back to the function so let's take one example of factorial and let's uh, understand how this actually works and uh, we will also see the representation stack representation as well as tree representation so in this case you will see like uh, we, we were calling initially like uh, the same function again and again so this is not this this phenomena is also called as stack overflow okay stack overflow because at some point of time you will you will be uh, not be having memory to store the function calls and it will give you a stack overflow error okay because you don't have any memory left to utilize so this concept is stack overflow uh, let's take an example of factorial so so factorial let's say we are given uh, the factorial number three so three factorial okay so now normally how we calculate factorial is nothing but so we take that number and we keep on us uh, multiplying it with the previous number okay three into two into one and this will result us into six okay so so we'll be writing this uh, factorial function and our aim is to return this value of the factorial okay and this is our uh, input input variable these are uh, output variable okay so if you want to write this uh, write this code then what should be our approach so as you can clearly see that uh, we are starting from a number okay and we are not going beyond one in this case okay so this will be our base condition okay so for example let's say we have a factorial function okay and it, it will be take, taking a number some number okay in this case three and uh, so base case will be will ch first check okay if the number is equal to one or not okay so if it is one then we'll return return that number one okay B because we will not go beyond this we will not call our function f of f uh, factorial of zero factorial of minus one will not do that because the factorial of these numbers does not exist right so we'll call this function till the number is one and then we'll return okay return the value so this is our base condition okay and we are also satisfying our third condition that is we are returning whatever whatever we have or whatever we want to the result using the uh, return return keyword okay so now we want to write a recursive case so what would be the recur recursive case in for this uh, function okay now let's assume that uh, we we initially we are passing one so when we are passing one so one will be equal to one so one will be returned so definitely like uh, if you have a factorial of one it is nothing but one okay so this is uh, working as expected for one but what if uh, it is two factorial okay so two factorial is nothing but two into one okay so let's say we have two so two will definitely not uh, enter this uh, if uh, if condition okay now what we have to do is we have to call that function using recursion okay so factorial of uh, so say for example uh, num minus one okay so we are passing two here and then we are calling factorial on one so one will be passed to this function again and one will return one and the value of this will be one okay so basically this function has returned one and we want to multiply it by two and we already have two in this uh, num variable so we'll multiply it and we'll then return this okay so how exactly it will work let's understand using stack so say for example 
there is some main function which is calling our uh, factorial function so initially we will call factorial so this is our factorial function we will pass in 2 ok now we are executing uh, this line ok num so 2 is equal to equal to 1 so condition will be false so it will not go inside uh, then we will we'll have 2 here so num will be currently 2 ok and then multiply by there there will be uh, a function called here here as well okay so say for example uh, we are calling a function call here and then uh, again a factorial will be called this function will be called again so factorial of uh, 1 2 minus 1 is 1 so 1 will enter here so now uh, the value of this is 1 num is 1 so 1 is equals to equals to 1 yes it is 1 okay it satisfies the condition so we'll return 1 okay so the value of this function will be 1 and this will be popped off from the stack okay now the control will again go to this uh, our previous function okay where the num has value 2 okay and we are st we still still have not executed this line line entirely okay we are just executing this part okay so we we have completed executing this and the result of this is 1 and uh, in num we have 2 so 2 into 1 is is nothing but 2 overall it will be 2 okay so overall it is 2 so 2 will be returned from this function so it will return 2 and uh, let's say for example in main function we have a print statement so we we can print 2 here okay and then once the main function is also executed it will be again it will also be popped off from the stack so th this is how it works okay and this uh, this type of uh, recursion is called as uh, functional recursion so here if you if you see like uh, we are not passing the result okay so for example we are just passing reducing the number but we are actually calculating the result uh, when we complete the uh, function call okay when this function call is executed when we actually uh, pass one here and then once we get one back okay or whatever the result in this case in this case so one is equals to one it will return us one and then we'll have the have the value so we'll multiply it with our number so we are actually doing our calculation after 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 we are come after we are done with the function call okay and then we are returning it so this is called functional recursion there is another type of recursion called as a parameterized recursion where we will where we will actually create a, a variable and will pass that variable okay we will create a variable which will which will be our result and then we will pass it to the uh, recursive function okay let's see how it works so this is a uh, functional recursion functional uh, recursion okay and let's say there is another called parameterized parameterized recursion so let's write a code for it as well so code will almost be the same so it, there will not be any much uh, differences so let's say we have a factorial function and uh, <coughs> which will which will take an input called number okay here also we'll check if the number is equals to equals to one okay now there is a one addition so we'll also pass the result as well so we'll pass int a product because we are multiplying it so we are also passing this uh, creating a new uh, t t accepting a new variable called product and we'll pass the product as well while calling the function call while making a function call now at the end what we are what we want to do is we want to return this uh, product okay will not return one will once we have this once we once we reach one will directly return this product because we have already calculated it so we don't have to return one we can directly return the result it's a result itself which is the which is stored in the product okay and these are base case okay and uh, for recursive case we will directly uh, call this function so factorial of we will pass uh, of course num minus one so we are again passing uh, so if the initial number is two we'll pass one to this and then here we will multiply okay so we'll have two 
in this uh, variable and we will multiply it by the product itself okay so initially initially the value of the product will be one okay and uh, let's say we are, the reason why we are uh, taking a default value as one is because we can't take zero okay because zero will make everything zero so we want some number which will not affect our uh, calculation so that's the reason why we are taking one year so once we pass one so two into one is nothing but two okay so two will be passed to this function let's let's draw a stack again okay so say we have a main function which which has called our function then there is a factorial function so two will be passed and one will be passed as a product initially it is one okay then we'll pass uh, yeah then we'll check if num is uh, one no num is two so then we'll call our uh, another function where we'll be passing uh, num num minus one so two minus one is one and then one into one is also one so one into one is also one yeah initially i've taken sorry sorry num is two so two into one is two so two will be passed to this function and then we'll check if uh, num is equals to one or not yes in this case num is one so we'll return the product so two will be returned okay so this function will return two and then the the control will come to this function and this function is a function itself right we are not multiplying or anything after we have called this function so we can simply return this as well so this function will also return two and then of course like pointer will go to the main function and main function let's assume that we have uh, some print statement so it will print two and then it will be also popped off from the stack now if we want to represent so this is one way of representing recursion using stack there is another way of uh, representing a recursion that is using recursion tree okay so so for this same function say we have uh, yeah so let's say initially we have this uh, factorial function okay we are calling it with 2 comma 1 okay so this is the initial part then after which after entering this we are again calling this function okay so factorial 1 comma 2 so this this is the uh, the tree representation this is the tree representation okay currently it only has two two levels but for example if you are passing uh, three factorial then definitely it will have a more levels as well so let's uh, take an example and see that as well mm, so initially let's say we are using factorial and we are passing three initially three comma one so product will always remain one and uh, then we will again make a function call where we will be reducing the value of the number now it will be two and we will multiply it with the product okay so three into one is three so three will be passed then again we will make a function call to factorial function then we will reduce the value of num it will be one and then we'll again multiply so three twos are six so six will be passed at this case uh, num equals equals one which holds so then we'll return this prod okay so six will be returned so and this function will also return six and then we will print that okay so this is how the tree re representation looks like so the space complexity is uh, is the height of the tree or the height of the recursion calls that we make okay so it is nothing but order of n is the space complexity and the time complexity of recursion depends on uh, how many function calls are happening so currently since uh, we are only calling the function once okay so for this program it will be order of n time complexity will be order of n and space complexity will also be order of n so the time complexity may vary depending upon the the function calls that you are making so for example there might be cases where we want to call this uh, this same function multiple times so for example let's say the return case might be let's say fact 1 plus fact 2 plus factory something like that okay 
so here in this case uh, you are calling this function three times so, so the time complexity would be order of three raised to n okay in worst case of course and let's say we are we are only calling only function two times then it will be order of uh, order of two raised to n so the time complexity will change depending upon the number of times that you are calling this function okay but space complexity will will always be order of n for recursion so now that we have actually understand the concept of recursion and we have also seen the parameterized recursion as well as the functional recursion and we have also solved one example of factorial so let's take one uh, lead code question called power of 2 and uh, try to implement this concept so this is the question that we will be solving uh, which is called the power of 2 and uh, so here we have given an integer n uh, here we want to return true if uh, it is a power of 2 otherwise return false okay so basically we have a number we will be given a number okay we want to determine if there exists a power that will result into that number okay so for example so here we we are given uh, one as the input and we and two raised to zero actually uh, results into one okay similarly we are given 16 here and uh, two raised to four results in 16 okay now there might be cases where this may not hold okay so for example if you are given three there is no power of two which will result three okay so we have to return false if it is if it exists then it, we have to return true so let's take this uh, example n is equal to 16 and let's understand how we will be approaching this problem we have a number 16 which is our input number and we have to find if there is a power power of 2 that will result in 16 so the power of 2 is is 4 okay so 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 into 2 which will result in 16 okay so that is nothing but 2 raised to 4 is 16 so 4 exists okay so then there is a power that exists which results in 16 okay so we'll return true so as you can see like uh, we have the powers like this so 2 raised to 0 is 1 2 raised to 1 is 2 2 raised to 2 is 4 2 raised to 3 is 8 and 8 2 raised to 4 is 16 okay like that <clears throat> now we are given this number okay 16 now what we can do is we can just uh, keep on dividing this number and we'll try to reach this one if we can reach this one then we can say that uh, the number which has been provided to us it exists okay if we can reach this one we can say that this number exists in this uh, so there is some power which will result in this number okay so this is kind of an approach that uh, we will be following so how we will actually know that so at every step we will keep on uh, uh, dividing this number okay so with uh, 2 so 16 divided by 2 will lead us to 8 okay so this is what we will get then when we do 8 divided by 2 we will get 4 okay and 4 divided by 2 will get 2 and 2 divided by 2 will get 1 like that okay so we have reached 1 which means that 16 is, is the power of 2 this is the approach that we will be following there is one more thing that we have to identify as well so whenever we are dividing okay so before dividing we will check if that number <coughs> mod of that number is 0 or not okay so 16 modulus uh, 2 should be should should be equal to 0 okay so if it is equal to 0 then we can keep on dividing it because 2 is a so that number whatever number will get so this is the number okay 16 in this case so 16 if if it is resulting in 0 which means that it is a multiple of 2 so it's not harm that uh, we can later divide it okay we can divide it by 2 if it is not let's say for example if it is not equal to 2 if it is not equal to 0 16 modulus 2 then will return false okay because there there is no power of 2 that will yield this number 16 okay so let's uh, trace it out as well 
so for example we have 16 okay we'll we'll first uh, so base condition would be if if the number okay input number so in this case num is 16 so if uh, num is equals to equals to 6 sorry if num is equals to equals to equals to 1 then what we'll do is we'll return okay and what we want to return is that uh, we want to return true if we if we can reach 1 then definitely that number so there is a power of 2 that will result into that number okay so these are base condition so we are identified our base condition okay if this is not the case then we'll first check if the given number so 16 modulus 2 should not be equal to 0 okay if it is equal to 0 then we'll return false okay because we want to check if that number is a multiple of 2 or not so 16 is definitely a multiple of 2 okay so let's uh, check this as well so 16 2 so 2 8s are 16 which will result us in 0 which means that uh, since we are getting 0 we are fine with it so 2 16 is a multiple of 2 so we can go ahead and we can divide this number okay so 16 divided by 2 is nothing but 8 okay so we have reached this this part 8 okay now we'll check if 8 modulus 2 should not be equal to 0 okay so let's see so this 8 is due 2 4 is a 8 which results in 0 okay so 8 is also a multiple of 2 which means that we can go ahead and divide it so 8 divided by 2 is equals to 4 okay so we have reached this step then we'll check if 4 modulus 2 should not be equal to 0 okay so let's see so this is 4 so 2 2 is a 4 this is 0 okay so this also satisfies the condition which is not equal to 0 and uh, so if it is not equal to 0 then we'll return false huh? otherwise we'll go so this is 0 so we'll continue our recursion okay so before that we'll we'll divide it okay so 4 divided by 2 is nothing but 2 then we'll again do it so let's do it here only so 2 modulus 2 should not be equal to 0 let's see so so we have 2 so 2 ones are 2 which is 0 okay so we'll continue so we got 1 here so we'll divide it 2 divided by 2 is nothing but 1 okay now when we at this stage we will stop okay since we are, since we got 1 we will stop So this is how we'll be solving our function. So let's go to our editor. So here we have a, a boilerplate code. So here we have main function, okay, and we have created a class called recursion, uh, which uh, does not have anything, uh, which only has this uh, function power of two, which will take a number n and which will return a boolean, okay, and uh, whatever value it returns, we are storing it in uh, this uh, boolean variable, okay. And we are calling this uh, power of two function by passing in this integer num okay and then we are just printing printing the value of result okay into this so and this is what it will be printing so power of two exists for number and here it will be true or false okay okay so let's implement this function so we already know our base case so so if num is equals to equals to one we are returning true okay these are base case okay so let's write it if if uh, number is equal to equals to one then we'll return true okay these are first case the second thing is what we are doing secondly so we are actually finding the mod and it should not be zero okay if it is uh, not equal to zero so it should be zero if it is not equal to zero then we'll return false okay so n modulus and modulus 2 
should not be equal to zero okay so if that's the case then we'll return false which means that uh, there there is no power that will result this number there is no power of two that will result into this number okay else what we want to do okay we want to perform recursion so let's call this function again power of two and we'll pass this integer so what we'll do we'll divide the number okay so num divide by two because here also if you see at the end we are dividing this number eight and then we are passing this eight to uh, this function okay so we'll be dividing it by two now there is one more thing here what if uh, we are passing zero okay so in this case uh, this function will not work so we have to write another or condition here so if n is equals to equals to zero then we'll directly return false because there is no power of two that will result in zero okay so two raised to zero becomes one and uh, there is no power that results in zero so this is the case that we want to add additionally yeah and uh, let's remove this uh, we'll directly printing result so yeah, it is returning true so our code is working properly so let's now check for number one mm, yeah which is this is also returning true let's see for three it should return false yeah it is returning false okay so it's great let's check for 12 12 should also return false because uh, 2 raised to uh, there is no power of 2 that will result 12 yeah so the code our code is actually working so let's uh, put it into lead code so okay so let's run it okay so there is a yeah we are calling this function run it okay so the test cases got accepted all the three test cases let's submit the code to execute on other test cases hopefully it should uh, it should be accepted yeah so the our code got accepted and uh, that's it for this video and if you like this video please subscribe to language studios and i will catch you up in the next video